Hi, have you heard about Bitcoin? Not Bitcoin, but Bipcoin. Bravo, India, Papa, Coin. Bipcoin is a new cryptocurrency that you can start mining today for free on ordinary computers. Unlike most altcoins, Bipcoin is not a clone of Bitcoin. Bipcoin is based on entirely new, more recent, and better code called CryptoNote. So unlike Bitcoin, Bipcoin has truly untraceable transactions, does not require specialized mining rigs, and has adaptive limits. Plus, Bipcoin is the only cryptocurrency covered by the Bipcot no government license. This allows use and reuse by anyone except governments and government agents. If you're still kicking yourself in the head for not getting in on the ground floor of Bitcoin, start mining, using, and trading Bipcoin today. Not a guarantee. Mining Bipcoin costs you nothing but the electricity to run your computer. And we already take Bipcoin for stickers and buttons. Go to Bipcoin.org. That's Bipcoin.org. Once again, that's Bravo India Papa Coin.org. Yeah, there's like multiple packs yeah. between multiple countries, multiple times over on the, on 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 what the what's known as Antarctica. So nobody can own it, and everybody owns it. It's you know, it's it's collectivism to the highest order. Nobody, Something's up it's, with it's, Antarctica. It's, no, it's, it's, Google Schro- it. it's, it's Schrodinger's property. <laughs> Nobody owns it, and everybody owns it all at the same time. <laughs> well, that's because it's the ice wall. Yes, and well, they're all see, conspiring to that, keep that, us from. That's what the flat you know, earthers have been trying to tell me. I mean, there's, there's an ice wall out there, and the the Vanunaki are trying to escape the it. Vanunaki. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! No oh, man. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 105th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So this week, we are brought to you again by Phone and once again by the now rebranded Room for Freedom, which is Ben mm-hmm. Stone's project which is the site and great app. friend of the show ben stones yes that is correct uh the website and app that is going to be basically the freedom version of airbnb but much cooler because there's going to be the option to accept much more uh, much more uh, options for payment so uh it's already got a leg up and it's more geared towards security and privacy than uh than airbnb is so Whole bunch, of, whole bunch of pluses in its favor already. So we are quite happy to be sponsored by it, and quite happy to promote the project. So go check that out. That information is always going to be in the show notes, so you can go check that out there. Anyway, this week we have a returning guest. We have Shane Radliff from Liberty Under Attack. Who this week we have back to talk about the other podcast he's currently doing, which he kind of mentioned the last time we had him on, which is the Vanu podcast. So they just wrapped up their first season and I wanted to get him on to uh, talk about it a little bit because I've been listening along and really enjoying the, the, what, the, what him and uh, Kyle have been putting out over there. So Shane, thank you very much for joining us tonight, man. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks so much for the uh, invitation. It's a pleasure to be back on uh, the Seas of Liberty with, uh, with you fine folks. Well, you're, 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 you're amazing, you. man. <laughs> I've, I've been a fan of yours and i i really appreciate you always sharing your content in in our facebook group man i, I really do oh yeah no problem i mean it's uh it's you know some a lot of a lot of great folks there and i i think uh you know especially you know uh, folks in the seas of liberty group uh could find a lot of value you know when uh, uh whether it's liberty under attack and direct action or you know the Vani podcast which is it is it is direct action but uh it's it's a little more i guess uh, it's more of a, a cohesive strategy with with like a philosophy behind it not just uh, direct action you know generally like a, like i like we kind of discussed uh, last time i was on here mm-hmm. yeah and I, I i like i said you the last time you were here you started to mention about this and uh, i've been following along and it's yeah it's definitely more well, so far, you guys just did season one where you basically were laying the groundwork, I guess, right? Kind of like definitional stuff and uh, covering where this this very interesting individual who uh, who's, who goes by the name, who, who went by the name of at least Rayo, right? Rayo, that's the name? That, uh, Correct, Rayo. That, that, that's the basis of this whole thing. So if you don't mind, uh, I guess... Let's see, what would be the easiest way? Why don't you, uh, if, if you could, just tell us uh, maybe the 
you know, the elevator type pitch for uh, for Vanu itself, and uh, then maybe we'll get into to Rayu. And maybe that. the the first principles of the philosophy of it, right? Yes, yes, for sure. So, uh, so, so, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of just mention this, uh, mention this real quick. But yeah, uh, Vonnie was a, a freedom strategy largely developed in uh, the '60s and '70s by a gentleman named Rayo. Uh, he also went by El Rayo, uh, and his real name was uh, is Tom Marshall, uh, which and yeah, that's kind of kind of in- uh, kind of interesting. But uh, but anyways, Vonnie is uh, uh, it's premised around the invulnerability to coercion, uh, and that's uh, public, you know, governments or private, uh, you know, private criminals, because uh, you know even at, even in an, even in an, and Kapistan, uh, you know, uh, crime will, will still mm-hmm. exist and Vanu will still be necessary. Uh, so the the main premise behind Vanu is invulnerability to coercion, becoming as invulnerable to coercion as you possibly can. Um, now I guess to to kind of uh, yeah, and that's 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 the that's like the the very very basic uh, groundwork. Uh, but but I guess to go a little further into that, Vanu is shades of gray. Uh, it's not uh, black or white. So in other words, it's not an all or nothing thing. Uh, so. Uh, it's an open system, not a closed system like agorism. So with Vanu, uh, uh, as long as as long as what you're doing is making you more invulnerable to coercion, uh, then it's then then you're working towards Vanu. Uh, whereas agorism, as I'm I'm sure you guys and your listeners are, are well aware of, I mean uh, yeah. it's 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 a pretty rigid rigid you know <laughs> actionable philosophy, right? You have to practice in the counter economy with the goal of you know smashing the state. I mean that's kind of uh, that's that's kind of just just the way it is. Whereas wow. with Vanu. Uh, <laughs> well, I would. Uh, you well, step in there, Jim? Oh, I would. Yeah, I would just say. I mean, that I think that might have been Konkin's idea originally, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, like the modern. I, I don't know if that's the yeah the plight the of mo- the neo agorist. Um, yeah, the, the modern day agorist, which I, I consider myself, I lean a lot more in that direction than anything else. I guess, uh, just not necessarily. I mean, yeah, is is the goal to be that way? Sure, but I also think that uh, at least for me, work it working What's, what's your it. definition of agorist, Jeremy? Cuz here here's mine. One who participate in participates in zero coercion in the marketplace. Um, I mean, that's that's a pretty fair. It has, has to be outside the scope of government too, right? Yeah, well, it's the counter well, like well, what the what, state. what you what you said, Shane. I don't I don't really necessarily argue with that in general. Like I said, the the whole idea of you know counter economics and do and try and the goal with the goal of smashing the state. You know that was uh, Konkin was the idea was to try to pull back and 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 do it like immediately, and that was that was how, that's how you were going to smash it by everybody going into this counter going into the counter economics, uh, <laughs> but. Just like completely said, ignoring the state. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, yeah. in in the modern sense, at least most of the people I know that associate that that with with I that just, term are yeah. more so you just using it as a tool, uh, working towards. I a think they're using goal. it as a word to describe the current actions that they're trying to take, more or less. That it's more of the non-coercive market, you know, like free market kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, even even just engaging in you know as, as, in, as often as you can in the, in the quote unquote black market you know that's that's working towards that end too so. untaxed but yeah. now that now that we've gotten completely off track what Shane was talking about <laughs> sorry. I was just wondering it's, it's yeah, yeah. didn't want to I just I'm sorry I get, but uh, uh, agorist can be a, a very confusing term for a lot of people well, no, I, I like I said, I don't think Shane's necessarily. I don't see. That's why I didn't think you. I didn't think you were wrong. I was talking about the listeners. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's it's not. Yeah, well, it can be for anybody who doesn't really understand it. Um, but like he's like I said, Shane wasn't wrong because that I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what Konkin's vision was. <laughs> oh no, uh, no 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 yeah like, a lot that's of us de- a lot of people yeah. a lot of people look, took took Konkin's ideas like yeah he had some good ideas and uh, let's do this let's do this with it instead. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so yeah. so, but it, like you said, any anything working towards it is 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 in the vein of Vanu, right? That's that's where we left off. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. Correct. Um. Yeah. Where. Yeah. And and I guess a a, a better way to put agorism nowadays, since you know some people have kind of uh, I guess maybe maybe agorism is in their self interest. You know. Um. You know, kind of saving money on ta- saving money on the theft known as taxes or whatever. Just thought consistent with action is, is I think you know probably more. Uh, more applicable to you to to most agorists today, um, but so yeah, that's Vanu invulnerability to coercion, and it's an open system. So uh, it's it's very applicable. I mean, uh, and and I will say this too. Uh, Rayo uh, formulated a concept known as ethical enclaves in the year of nineteen. 19- 
65. And, you know, since we're, we're talking about agorism mm -hmm. here, this is an interesting little piece of libertarian history for you. Uh, but I'll read this definition that he provided. Uh, and again, this, this article was written in November of 1965. It was published in, in the uh, Innovator uh, publication. Uh, he says, hmm. quote, an ethical enclave is defined here as voluntary transactions between individuals who are living under a collectivist government when such transactions are conducted independent of that government. End quote. So that sounds a whole lot, whole lot like agorism, doesn't it? It sounds almost yeah. exactly like agorism, yes. actually. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he re-memed it. <laughs> no, no, he... he no, no, he, he, he was... Did this Conkin would have been... Conkin would have been would have been 18 years old whenever whenever I wrote oh, that article. Oh, so so he beat Conkin. Con yeah, yeah, Conkin yeah. just yeah. Conkin yes. re -memed. Conkin took it and ran with it. Yeah. Conkin's the the meme thief. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that's that's the right. that's what I found I found that very very interesting when uh with, when I first learned that through listening to your podcast. I thought that was I was like, "Oh yeah, see, there you go. Everybody, you know, there are no new ideas <laughs> under the sun." <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the, there are. And, and, and I guess what's to, to kind of compare it, like, uh, I guess just in, in the vein of Vanu. Um, so ethical enclaves are an option for a Vanuan to take, whereas obviously, I mean, if you're going to be an agorist, you have to practice agorism, right? Uh, ethical enclaves are just one way for people to, uh, just just one, one option that, that Rio kind of laid out. Uh, but I think that's a, a really interesting piece of libertarian history. But I, I want to mention this too, since uh, I'm sure most of your audience is, is, is you know, anarchists or voluntarists. Uh, but uh, Bavani was not inherently anarchic. Uh, it does overlap with the direct, a direct action of, you know, quite a few schools of thought, uh, anarchic schools of thought, that is. Uh, but Ray was definitely not an anarchist. Uh, unfortunately, he kind of held the same view of anarchism uh, that Ludwig von Mises and Ayn Rand held. Uh, so he really didn't understand it. So the, I was gonna say, yeah, uh, so the wrong not, one. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and he he did when, when he when he kind of grew up. He was very do you into think, the like he Shane. Yeah, go ahead. Do you think those guys back in the day, the the people you mentioned before, do you think they were opposed to anarchism because of the implications at the time of just coming out and advocating full blown anarchism in the state? I mean, think about it at the time. That would have she would have directly been linked with communists because that's what they've done. Uh, you know, I, I don't even think it's that because because Rayo wasn't afraid to, to to touch subjects that weren't uh, weren't popular. Then I think it was just due to a misunderstanding. Uh, there was uh, there's an uh, we did, it was actually two episodes we did. Uh, one of them was uh, libertarians and coercivists, which is an article by Rayo uh, that thankfully didn't make it into the book because it was just it was just bad. Uh, it, it was bad, and he he grew he grouped all of the anarchists in with kind of the. Uh, it, it was kind of like you know the the, the 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 rioters like the bashing bashing property and things like that. That's kind of how I viewed anarchists. Uh, so I, I think it was just from a basic misunderstanding because you, you got to remember too, back in the sixties and seventies, uh, he was talking about you know uh, how how public education was like a communist indoctrination camp, uh, which you know, I mean that's uh, <laughs> that's news that's yeah. that's news to to quite a few people today. Uh, so he was right. talking about that back then. He was uh, you know advocating major major lifestyle changes when most people didn't even like. You know, understand the scourge of government. I mean, things have gotten a lot worse, uh, you know, since the 60s and 70s, uh, uh, arguably, I guess, depending upon your, uh, upon your perception. No, the state's uh, but, gotten huge. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was recognizing these things in the 60s and 70s and writing about them. So I don't think he would have, fe he would have been fearful of going, going in that direction. Not at all. Uh, and, and, and if you read some of his writings in section one of his book, uh, uh, the philosophy portion, I mean, he sounds like an anarchist. Uh, he, he really does. Um, so I, I, I think if, if he would have, if he would have like been around to, you know, get through the, uh, get through like the, the Rothbard and some of the other material and, and stuff like that, I think he probably would have called himself an anarchist. I don't know that for sure. And unfortunately, uh, if he's still alive, uh, he'd be about 75 or 80, somewhere in that range. And, uh, uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, I don't have his uh, Skype contact information or anything. So can't get call, but, uh, <laughs> but APB but, out on Rayo, hit up Shane Radliff. <laughs> last, last seen in a polyethylene A10 or polypropylene A10 in Siskiyou region, Northern California and Southern Oregon. Uh, let us oh, know if you found him. He got banned in van, buddy. He well, got, he, he well, got no, disappeared. That's, well, no, that's what, that's, that's how he lived. He actually, well, did no, he live in a van for a while? Yeah. That's, that's van no nomadism, right? That's part of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's yes. something that sprung out of his ideas. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's the other interesting thing about him is he just kind of disappeared, right? Like he, he came up with these ideas and then he started trying to live that he was living these ideas for what I think, what was it? I guess five plus years, I, if I remember correctly, before he just up and vanished in 74, like nobody heard from him ever since after that. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and let me since, since we're talking about Rayo here, let me just like again like that the elevator pitch of, of who Rayo was. Um, but so so yeah, Rayo was uh, he he was you know in the in the bustling libertarian culture in you know Los Angeles and in Southern California, uh, where you know uh, uh, that's where Konkin kind of uh, came from back around that same time, mm-hmm. and uh, and obviously folks like George H. Smith uh, who actually lives in Bloomington where I live. I like to get a hold of him sometime. Uh, but yeah, he was a part of that bustling, you know, libertarian community uh, there. And uh, uh, he was very, he was, uh, you know, very interested in, you know, the objective of schools of thought. He was at the Nathaniel Brain Institute for a while. And uh, mm. uh, he was, uh, he actually kind of uh, took part in, uh, he was an engineer. Uh, very, if, if you read, if you read his book, he, he thinks he, he, you can just tell he's an engineer. Um, but uh, he, he was, he worked with uh, some, some folks on something called the Free Isles Project with the goal of, uh, the goal was to create a new libertarian country. And, uh, you know, they were kind of planning it for, you know, long for, you know, a few years. And he said, okay, enough talk, let's still to do this. And, and, you know, they weren't ready for action. So he, he, he said, screw it. And uh, took the initiative himself and moved out of his apartment into a uh, van mounted uh, on his pickup truck or a camper mounted on his pickup truck and he decided to pursue van nomadism so he stayed uh, he he drove around and stayed at public and pu- on public and private property uh, and you know uh, uh, did that for a while and you know he he wrote about uh, some of the some of the struggles there uh, and he he realized that that wasn't uh, you know as much freedom as he wanted uh, because unfortunately and this is still the case today there's no uh, vanu solution for it so to speak uh, but if you drive on the public roads and you're trying to become you know more invulnerable to coercion it's a good idea to have your slave tags uh, uh, is what he <laughs> called them you know i.e. the driver's license the license plate uh, uh, all all of that uh, all of those terrible things uh, so he actually decided uh, he said you know uh, van was good and all but uh, you know uh, I, I want to take this you know <laughs> even even more radical uh, and I guess I'll, I'll preface this first by saying whenever whenever you hear what radio did this is you don't have to do this to become a Vanuin because uh, you know I, I don't want to do this I, I don't want to this isn't this isn't what I want to do and I'm <laughs> no, sure a no, lot of you guys I, this is a new yeah, cult well, well, trying to start Jeremy, we have trying. families you know being van nomads I don't think that's that's particularly appealing but the the concept behind it is, oh, it gets, is it gets better yeah. unless you're trying to get I, away I from your the, family uh, this, then, that, then maybe but you know <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> I, anyway, I think I'm the sorry, stance go, of go this sh- I, I think the stance of this show Shane has always been uh you know, hey, hey, we're just gonna tell you what we're doing here, guys. Don't uh, <laughs> don't monkey see, monkey don't do on this, this one unless you're willing to risk it. Yeah. So it actually, you know, the van nomadism thing, that's pretty mild. There are a lot of people that do that. If you look, uh, they're called van dwellers now on YouTube. There's a lot of people doing that. Isn't, yeah, uh, isn't uh, Daryl Perry actually fit under that? Daryl W. Perry, doesn't the only legitimate presidential candidate last year, by the way. The only legitimate. Doesn't he still live in his van, <laughs> Daryl? The only legitimate. Who? Daryl W. Perry from uh, Free Talk Live and all the other projects he does. Also known as the only legitimate candidate for president last <laughs> yes, year. Sorry. Thank you. I'm, I'm almost positive he still lives in his van. He has re- for a large part of the time he's lived in New Hampshire, as far as I know. Or at least the, the, since the Free State Project. I know, he di- I know he did. I don't know if he still does or not. I haven't really paid that much attention, but I wouldn't be God, surprised. God, those libertarian debates were great. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, we're getting sidetracked. I'm, I'm sorry. Go on. Uh, go I just meant to bring it up because I thought it was interesting because I think he did. And even if he did at one point, wasn't he technically living part of it then if you're living out of your van like that? Um, well, I, I get. I would. I would say. Yeah. I would. I would. I would say. I would say. Yeah. At least. At least in some sense. I, I don't know exactly what Daryl was doing to complement that. Uh, I. I don't know how he was actually doing it, so I, I couldn't kind of you know speak to that. But if he was more invulnerable to coercion, then yeah. I mean that would that would be. Uh, so, he was. He was very. He was very mobile. Uh, and mobility. You know, if if they can't find you, they can't do anything to you. So if he was moving around a lot, uh, I would say yeah. He definitely. You know. Uh, uh, he, he was definitely. You know. Uh, you know, uh, practicing Vanu at least uh, in, in some in, in some regard. Um, but well, it, it, get, it gets a little more interesting though because Rayo, yeah, Rayo, like he liked the van, but again, the slave tags. He didn't like that. He he had contact with the bludgies. That's what he called government agents. Uh, I like and, that. Uh, I think I'm gonna start using. That. <laughs> I do too. I love it. Yeah, bludgeons, bludgies, bludgies are, are trespassers. I don't, I'm I like them both now. <laughs> but uh so so yeah he uh um him and uh, he had a freemate so her name was Roberta and uh the, yeah they decided the a van wasn't mate. good enough for him so they they moved uh yeah freemates uh that'd be i guess that they were they were around in like the time of the counterculture and there's a lot of hippie stuff kind of uh intermingled Understood. Uh, uh, they Understood. like yeah so <laughs> but yeah they they decided to uh you know go live in a polyethylene a tent uh so he he put it there's a uh, if you look at uh, the the, uh, the the actual book is digitized for free on the Vani website uh, and there's also an audiobook to go with it uh, just vanipodcast.com and uh, it's right there at the top of the page free Vani book um and you can actually look at this image 
image, but he 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 kind of drew up a, a diagram of what their what their you know living structure looked like, and so it was essentially like a piece of rope uh, tied between between two trees, and there were like a frames for support. And uh, then they threw like uh, just a piece of plastic over the top of, of essentially is what it was. And that's where they lived, you know, in the mountains, you know, uh, Northern California and Southern Oregon. So it got freakishly cold. Wow. Uh, so that's what they decided to do. Uh, so when, when Rhea was writing for uh, the various libertarian publications back in the 60s or 70s, uh, you know, uh, Innovator, Free Trade, Libertarian Connection and Vanu Life, he was writing on a typewriter in his polyethylene a tent uh <laughs> then he was mailing them off to his his, his mailing list uh, for, for the catalogs oh that's yeah impressive. that is <laughs> that's hardcore that's a, that's a hell of an accomplishment that's some that, commitment that blows my mind yeah i was about to say that is commitment well yeah that's take that's yes. take well that's definitely taking your ideas and putting them into practice i mean yeah I, I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> regar like, uh, regardless of the outcome it's taking it all the way to the all the way to the end yeah that's like good. it you can't you can't go much farther than that right? <laughs> so so I, I know you're going to further explain it, but I think I'm getting the essence of it is is basically anything that pragmatically gets you towards getting all the coercion out of your life is Vanu. Yes, yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, becoming as invulnerable to coercion as possible is is that's that's the the main thing about Vanu. So obviously, you know, uh, um, get where the uh, get where the state can't find you and reach you, uh, and then also, you know, uh, it's just um, there, libertarianism there, there, in action, basically. Pretty much. Pretty much, yes. Um, uh, if, if, yeah, in essence, in essence. But but there, there's there's a little more to the theory here. And uh, Jeremy, you listened to uh, to season one, the philosophy of Vanu. So you're you're aware of this. But uh, but I guess so, some I guess one other very interesting thing about Rayo is uh, is kind of the what what he viewed back in the '60s and how you know timeless how, how just how completely timeless his his observations were. Uh, you know, back in that time. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There's a formula here, and this is this is kind of the. If if your listeners are asking, well, why Vanu? Why did he decide to do this? Why should I consider this? Well, uh, uh, Rayo, uh, uh, there, there's a formula here, and I'll I'll define these terms here in a moment. But uh, political crusading, con plus controlled schizophrenia, <laughs> plus collective movementism equals the servile society. Uh, so obviously, politically, po political crusading is quite obvious, right? Uh, you know, uh, a strategy to restore liberty uh, by working inside of the system in order to change it from within. Uh, so right. that's the first element of this equation. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second, which uh, didn't gain Rayo any friends, uh, controlled schizophrenia, uh, <laughs> the mental state of an opportunistic citizen serf within the servile society who practices double think, yet who still acts in his own best interest. Uh, so political crusaders would be one example of this. Uh, and and Rayo he, he puts forth one example, and this is I think this is the only time he uses the term uh, in his in this book. But uh, but I've kind of uh, Kyle and I have kind of extrapolated that out to uh, uh, you know anarchist politicians. Uh, so yeah, we aren't making any friends either. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, but anyway, this is this is the uh, this is the I guess the example that Rayo provided, and I think it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, quote: The lower maximum exemplified in contemporary society by many a successful middle American. He lives conventionally, but takes advantage of some of the easier, more obvious loop, more obvious loopholes. He pays income taxes, but hires a tax accountant to maximize deductions. He registers for the draft, but goes on, but goes to college in hopes of becoming made a technician instead of a target. His mental state is one of controlled schizophrenia. He <laughs> believes most of the status myths in which he was indoctrinated, yet maintains a modicum of skepticism. He goes to church, or at least accepts their standard of morality, but is not above having a drink at a nude bar. He is largely rational in his work, but keeps his rationality compartmented. He does not, dares not critically examine his life as a whole, uh, end quote. So that's controlled schizophrenia. And uh, the last element of, of this equation, on at least on this side, uh, is collective movementism, which is uh, an aggregate set of behaviors and actions that are aimed towards large-scale socio-political change and the furtherance of specific goals. And uh, these three things, political crusading plus controlled schizophrenia plus collective movementism equals the servile society, which is, quote, uh, or not quote, it's a definition, uh, a society that does not respect self-ownership or individual liberty, but rather heralds the supremacy of government and authority. In other words, it upholds the collective as superior to the individual. So, <clears throat> all that said, the servile society is the main foe of the Vanuan. So all of those components... Uh, all of those components into the servile society, that is the main foe of the Vanuan. 
Hmm. So I'll just kind of stop there since I, <laughs> I went a little rant there. <laughs> All right, just pause. Let's pause right yeah, here. He said he was pausing. I got, <laughs> I got a Dave Spiracy, okay? Oh, no. Go is for it. Ben oh, no, Stone, it is Ben Stone Rayo. No. Ben's not that old. <laughs> I don't think so. Rayo Ray would be okay, 75, right. right? Ben's only like 57, I think. Yeah. Uh, not all okay. old people are exactly the same, Dave. <laughs> okay. I, well, I, they, okay. They eerily, <laughs> eerily right. saying some some of the similar same Dave's, things. I'm gonna it, tweet that out tonight. I, I think that yeah. There <laughs> you go. Ben Stone is Ben Stone is, is Rayo. Is Rayo. <laughs> <laughs> it has to have hashtag Dave Spiracy so he even knows why. Why? It's, yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Blame it all on Dave. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I think that's a little bit far fetched. Anyway. All right. Back to back to the back to unpause. <laughs> Any hoodle. Okay, yeah. So, so, so I guess. So I guess. Oh, go, go ahead, Jeremy. I, mean, I was, yeah, was going to say. So, I mean, the the first part, obviously. The, I mean, the polit- political crusaders, like you said. It. Is, I mean, at least for me, with the first time you got, I heard you guys talking about it. It made perfect. Like I knew what he, I kind of thought I knew what he meant as soon as I heard that term, and it turns out that I I was kind of right because yeah, basically anybody who's going to try to use the system. The funny thing is though that I think. Unfortunately, most people <laughs> fall under the fall under the you know the the categories of that he was describing with all that stuff about what people do and, yeah. and how people take advantage and and are, are very hypocritical and uh, very contradictory. Controlled and, schizophrenia. Yeah, that 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 aspect of life. Like most people are like that, and when when it's turned towards, like say the liberty you know community. I hate that term, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know, in more in particular, like yeah, you see that ramp, you see that rampantly here too. Um, yeah, so 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 the Rayo, the libertarian community, would be full of controlled schizophrenics. Uh, yes, <laughs> with the libertarian party, with the libertarian party, I'm sure, because he was coming, like he disappeared shortly after the party actually formed. Um, yes, so. and, and that that's what's also fascinating too is is that he was writing about this uh, um, the the political crusading article like a, a lot of the stuff in season or in uh, section one of his book was written before uh, the formation of the anti libertarian libertarian party. Uh, so he was like I, I don't know exactly. I think he kind of I, I, I'm sure he was a reader of a lot of those publications. You know the ones that like you know Conkin and Reason and, and things of that. Like I don't know if Reason was around, but you you know what I mean. Just those various. That was how they communicated right through those publications. Those magazines mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh there so was, I'm, uh, I'm sure he was, was one I'm, that uh carl hess ran i believe i can't remember what it was called there was a there was a bunch of them out there that were um i think i think before i, th- I think it was damn bef- i think before just, fee i think they had any other day else. i would have nailed this sorry boys <laughs> yeah Oh yeah, he yeah he he mentioned uh, yeah he, him and Carl Hess he he wrote one uh, uh, in the book. There's one one of his responses to Carl Hess. So he communicated with uh, with with Carl Hess at least uh, you know at least a couple of times. Carl Hess is a very interesting fellow. So that like even intrigues me more to know that these guys are in correspondence. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, well, so so yeah. I mean he he was he was writing all these things before uh, b- before the Libertarian Party, and I'm guessing what what he kind of saw was you know uh, uh, people kind of you know writing back and forth like hey. What about a libertarian party? And he was probably like, "You've got to be kidding me! No, 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 no! <laughs> what are you guys doing?" Which is why, which is why I didn't pay attention. <laughs> so I think that's where oh, a lot of his hostility boy. came from. He he kind of just moved out in his van. He was like, "Vaughn is here, and you guys are going to go political crusading." Oh my gosh, this is lost. <laughs> uh, I think it's that was kind of, uh, and I guess one one other note too. I mean, yeah, in regards to his like his controlled schizophrenia thing, yeah, a lot of people. Uh, you know, some some that I even communicate with would probably be con- considered controlled schizophrenics. Um, it, it's important to know about Rayo that uh, that he was he, he was a very interesting and unique individual. Uh, and, and I think whenever uh, when he disappeared in 1974, I I, I do think, uh, you know, he was uh, I guess towards like probably the mid 60s to the begin the uh, early 70s. He was talking about things like Vanu associations, and he really wanted to find other Vanuans to you know like a, a Vanu in many cultures, what he called it. Uh, he wanted to kind of uh, uh, he wanted to kind of see that grow. Does, um, but uh, go ahead. Does Vanu stand for, like for an acronym or something? Oh gosh, yeah, I should I should have mentioned that. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a uh, that was that's well. I guess we'll do this now. Uh, yeah, Vanu is an awkward contraction of voluntary and not vo- uh, voluntary, not vulnerable. So that's what it's a very it's a very awkward contraction. Obviously, they weren't really con- really concerned with marketing it too well because uh, it's it's yeah super awkward. So voluntary, not vulnerable. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> voluntary, non 
vulnerable. Voluntary, yeah. not vulnerable. Yep. Just yep. like pick random okay, letters out of each word and go, here, this is our, this is what, you know, this is what we're going to use. Basically like saying, word, uh, yeah. It's basically saying, it's basically the snake. Uh, <laughs> what is this? Thing? What? I have no idea where you're going with that. <laughs> anyway, you were saying, Shane. Yes, Don't yes. Don't tread on me, the snake. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, I I, I, I suppose uh, you know he was uh, he, he really wanted to see kind of those mon uh, those Vanu mini cultures grow. But uh, there there was an article written by and this was like you know probably seventeen seventeen years after the fact. But uh, but Ray used to host something called Vanu Week where you know people would come out uh, come out to where he lives. You know they they obviously properly vetted and uh, he practiced he practiced very good security cultures. So there was no like uh, me there was no really designated meeting spot. He told him to pull like to he gave him like a. Uh, uh, a map. He's like, go two miles and then turn like, uh, and then turn right at at the oak tree, and then uh, drive dr drive this many miles and stop here, and I'll come out of the woods and whistle. Uh, and that that was kind of how how he found it. But the, this guy named Benjamin Best wrote. Um, uh, in, in this article, when he was like, when he got to spend a week with Rayo, uh, like Rayo really did want they they or him and Roberto really did want you know uh, um, that that sort of you know uh, connected with connectedness with with other individuals. But Rayo kind of said with the folks that that he's been meeting, uh, it was kind of like uh, that, like yeah, they wanted those good conversations, they wanted colleagues and such. But uh, the the folks that they were meeting, it was like uh, uh, it was like being uh, you know being you know being uh, extremely thirsty and then drinking salt water. Uh, what was kind of how he put it. Wow. So, I, so I think uh, I, I think towards uh, you know towards the, the time where he where he disappeared, I think that definitely had something to play with it. And uh, and and his last correspondence with John Fisher, the editor of his book, uh, and it's like a two sentence quote. But I think this will this will provide a lot of insight into uh, you know uh, the disappearance, the the infamous disappearance. Uh, he said this is uh, dated February fourteenth, nineteen seventy four. Quote: My thinking has undergone major changes in the last several months on interfacing alternate economics, interrelations in general. I, too, am becoming very dubious as to the value of all libertarian club involvements. We do not intend to use a libertarian club in the future as an avenue for gaining non-anonymous friends or associ associates, end quote. So that's the last thing anyone ever heard from Rayo. Uh, so I think my kind of theory here might, uh, you know, might, have something, might have something to do with, the with his disappearance. Obviously, again, I can't give him a call and see, see what actually happened. Uh, so that's kind of that's that. Hmm. Well, see, now it's funny because the, the one thing I, I had thought of, and, and this is, I mean, this will be a little, I guess, advanced for any <laughs> for anybody who hasn't listened yet. But one of the one of the things you actually, I just heard you mention when I, I listened to another show you put out uh, a couple days ago was, uh, you know, the different types of th different types of ways you can implement this. Uh, the different types of strategy, like there's what is it, like literally kind of like city vanu or something like that, or some kind of uh -huh. like that, uh, and then uh, all the or and then the other one is uh, was sailboat or so, something of that nature. Oh, the sailboats! Oh man, which is we talked one, about this first time I was on there. The sailboats, man, that's my favorite topic which, to discuss yeah, in the entire world. Which is the sounds, one that is I know, perfect for seasteading. Well, exactly. Well. Now, see, now that oh, yeah. now, and this is where or, I or thought of it. Sky steading. Sorry, we were talking about that today at the house. Sorry. Maybe, 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 maybe he decided to take that route, <laughs> and that's where he ended up. They ended up out in the water, and the, you know, I don't know. That is no, that is that is definitely possible. And I, I put out an it was an episode for Liberty Under Attack, but it's it's called Let's Lo Let's Talk Direct Action: Finding Freedom on the Open Ocean. And uh, I, I made I, I kind of said there that I do think, especially when you consider, uh, and Ray, Ray mentioned this too, uh, you know, especially the the slave tags and some of the other issues that, that he kind of ran into. Uh, but but uh, obviously with you know with you know the state becoming more tyrannical against you. Know, Know, private property owners such as like off-grid homesteaders uh, I think you know freedom seekers are going to you know uh, as, as Ray put it set sail for sunnier waters uh, because yeah. it, you, you consider you consider you know and, and, and this was I'm gonna bring in another book here. Uh, but anyways, uh, so the editor of, of Rayo's book, uh, uh, his name is John Fisher, and he's written a, a, a few books for Limpanics Unlimited, which is the publishing company that published Rayo's book. But uh, uh, his uh, his book is called. Um, the last frontier is on Earth. Strange places you can live free, and he has a whole, a whole section there on finding freedom in the ocean. This was published in the 1980s, uh, but one of his ideas just really resonated with me. Uh, so, it, and it really wouldn't, it really wouldn't take. And this is just one option for Vanu, but but again, I th I, I really do my subjective opinion. Uh, I do think uh, you know uh, the you know living on the ocean uh, could you know provide more more freedom. Um, or the ample amount Dude, of freedom. I or, or say whatever. leave the Luddite socialist uh, to the land and let's get out on the sea. 70% of the earth is supposedly uh, 
water why don't we start like the the largest nations in the world haven't even <laughs> you shown just say up supposedly yet. water yeah are you saying earth is flat and some of some of it's like rushing off supposedly. the side supposedly i had a deep talk with some vanunakis it doesn't rush off the side because the ice wall surrounds the entire thing man <laughs> look uh those are pedophiles what uh, interdimensional be anyways let's go back to yeah it's a <laughs> But no, the seriously, wall is made out of pedophiles? Is, seasteading, is, I'm so seasteading is going to be a temporary future uh, of humanity, for sure. It is, oh, until yeah. we get off the planet successfully and colonize uh, the, the, the galaxy. We, what, what's your mouse pocket in for, man? Uh, the, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> human race? <laughs> human, human Association <laughs> of ANCAP astronauts. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> voluntary like that. association of hand astronauts <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah but yeah uh so so and, and this I, I hadn't really thought of this guys but i'd like to get your thoughts on it but uh but one thing john fisher proposed was uh you know like let's say like off the east coast uh you know there's that line of international waters like where where like you you you, you sail forward and you're like uh, on the, the the you're on the ocean claimed by you know the united states government and you go outside of that and you're in international water so you could be right on the cusp of that uh, yes. And you know what? Uh, uh, and and what one thing? Uh, and this isn't specifically what what uh, John Ooh. Fisher brought up, but I imagine if you're if you're like that close to the shore, you probably could still get internet connection or at least a satellite hotspot or something like that. So if you ran like Our a set up uh, Wi-Fi bouncing buoys, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I suppose. And then I you suppose. could set up you could set up no tax market zones. <laughs> yes, you could. And then you could sell yes. barges to Amazon and become billionaires. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, well, it depends on what depends on what scale you want to take that to. I was thinking, I was thinking more like if you run like a blog or a website that's you know you have passive like you have income from that and that's your that's your living. I mean, you could stay out in the water most of your time. Uh, oh. and it, but yeah, that uh, that is an option. You could go more large scale. Well, sure. Well, anybody like that doesn't it, doesn't driving a jet ski sounds so much more fun than driving a car from place to place i'm just saying yes oh I, yeah i, I miss my not for me i i had a wave runner back in the day i missed that thing that was a lot of fun oh back in the 80s no you were a teen ha <laughs> you're so funny dave <laughs> <laughs> jesus dave. So, I, sorry I, I i actually had my wave runner in the early 2000s but you know anyway dang <laughs> but it wasn't uh, a stand-up yeah. one was it sorry. <laughs> no that's all right no dave uh, I actually, I really like the idea of seasteading. I don't live near a body of water anymore, so it's, I don't really spend that much time on the water. But I like this idea that there is a huge amount of, well, essentially real estate that doesn't belong to anybody, that has no sovereign claim to it, that you can go out there and if you can, if you have the means to do it, you can live out there entirely on your own without coercion yeah, without and, being mm -hmm. harassed by anybody pretty much i have big ideas for for island steading and and, and building the island but yes i don't i think I would it would like take that. up the majority of this the show well i guess we'll have to talk about it one other show but we've well hey uh, you some, might you might be interested really cool in eyes. uh you might be interested in john fisher's other book called uninhabited ocean islands uh, where he goes through a whole whole slew of islands that are, that are uninhabited uh seems like well, you and i are on the same page with this one dave <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, basically, the idea is to make a ship or a something that uh, a bunch of tugboats could pull that you could then funnel in all of the waste that's in the, the ocean. And this stuff would just chew that stuff up, melt it down, and then 3D print these things that then you just cover with sand and mangrove trees and all these other trees that then lock all this stuff together and actually build floating islands. Then you just cover that with topsoil, and then you just cover it with houses, and then then you just like, just like that. It's just uh, it's just this boom 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 boom. You can have build have, entire islands. And have they perfected that? I know they started. Didn't they start doing that off the? Uh, no, this would be massive. This would be like no, a no, worldwide. I, I understand <laughs> that, but they I know they started to do this stuff. I believe off of either Japan or China or maybe both. They, well, they there's started. so much trash out in the ocean. That was our idea. Is like, how do we make money off this? Oh, build an island builder that just 3D prints everything. Because in China, they're 3D printing entire cities right now. So that without any upkeep lasts like a hundred years. So. Something's mm. something's going to change. Like think of all the carpenters that are going to be out of work. Maybe they'll be busy working on building a ship that collects garbage in the 
ocean and Prince Island's out. Yeah, I want to mention one other thing here too, because but well, you know, obviously when Ray was doing this, you know the the technology the technology's changed quite a bit, right? Yeah, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, de- bit. it's definitely yeah, in, changed. In, so in fifty years, so I mean, I'd say, y- well, 40, 50 <laughs> years, yeah, I'd say so. So, so you could you could you could do similar things to what Rayo did and still have you know uh, at least uh, you know some of the amenities that that you're accustomed to, um, which makes it that much more attractive. Now, obviously, you know doing what he did that's that's extremely radical, and you know there's not really a need to do that anymore. Obviously, if if you're one of those folks that wants to go wilderness Vanu, be my guest. Tell us how it goes. Uh, <laughs> but for me, you know, I, I've I've uh, I, there are just some things that I that I that I kind of you know uh, uh, like to have. Uh, you know, such as uh, internet to do podcasts and things. Uh, so, toilet paper. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I, so I, I'm kind of attached to my internet. Yeah. Toilet paper and internet; those are pretty. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know if he was against using toilet paper, Dave. I don't know if he went that far. Well, he, mean, he was out. He was out dude, in the woods. Do you understand the industry that has to have to exist to create toilet paper? What? I haven't really it's thought like about it. It's, sure like it's, the like pencil, pencil, right? it's just like the pencil. It's just like the pencil. Yeah, I pencil. Yeah, that's why socialists run out of toilet paper immediately. <laughs> Look at Venezuela. It's like yeah, just you like, got a point. You got a point. Along with eating the cats and dogs. Yeah, well, in some places huh. they do that regularly anyway. So, um, you know. <laughs> but I, I I like this 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 like just trying to get uh, uh, as realistically free as possible. I think I think we're all on that path. But just really forming it up as just a philosophy is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And I want to mention one other thing, because I was talking to somebody a couple nights ago. He just started listening to the Vonnie podcast, and he was like, you know, like, stuff where I was doing is really awesome, man, but, like, I... I, I, I like my friends and I like I, I like you know the uh, I, I like you know having people to communicate with and like hang out with and I said you know I, I understand uh, I, I definitely understand but uh, and, and Rayo talked about this too but you, you could have like an intentional community on the water and and one advantage of that from say an intentional community on land uh, I'd, I'd say like I guess one example I could kind of I mean maybe the free state project is an intentional community I don't, I don't really I, I don't really know that's that's kind of a whole another can of worms since they're all political <laughs> crusaders essentially uh, but but, but anyways, like, like yeah. The, the, yeah. So so the intentional community on the water, uh, you know, sailboats. Uh, if, if any like you know, uh, I don't know any bludgies, international bludgies or whatever <laughs> came after you, international you just bludgies. leave. You just leave. <laughs> Whereas Set if if you're, in a, if you're in a fixed location, uh, you can't really do that. They know where you are all the time, and uh, and and that's just that's just kind of how it is. Uh, and then also, if you're on land, I mean, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, it, it is a reality that, uh, uh, and Vanu is focused on reality, not legality. Um, anyways, right. uh, uh, yeah, governments generally, you know, like 99.9% of the earth is, is or at least the, the land masses are kind of owned or, you know, uh, owned by governments. They, they've claimed, claimed ownership. Right. To them. Yeah, the states this is have true. just yes. claimed even some of those, Even some of those everything. islands. Even, some Even of those Antarctica, islands, most <laughs> they're like uh, most of the islands. We're all gonna agree that no one can own this. Like, well, that's de facto ownership. <laughs> yeah, there's like multiple packs yeah. between multiple countries, multiple times over on the, on 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 what the what's known as Antarctica. So nobody can own it, and everybody owns it. It's you know, it's it's collectivism to the highest order. Something's nobody ends up it's, with it's, Antarctica. It's, no, it's, it's, Google Schro- it. it's, it's Schrodinger's <laughs> property. Nobody owns it, and everybody owns it all at the same time. <laughs> well, that's because it's the ice wall. Yes, and well, they're all see, conspiring to that, keep that, us from. That's what the flat you know, earthers have been trying to tell me. I mean, there's, there's an ice wall out there, and the the Vanunaki are trying to escape it. Vanunaki. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm those... glad I can get Shane to laugh. That made my night. Sorry, <laughs> they, that's no. Been, that is that is hilarious. He's been he's been dying to use that line. <laughs> there's there's dark pyramids down in the bottom of antarctica anyways and they're talking with the moon of thantos oh, there's giant metal we're trapped floors. on an interdimensional thing by vampires <laughs> and if you don't drink your bone broth you'll die hey what's wrong with bone broth man it's delicious <laughs> oh i just man i love alex jones I, sorry I he do. cracks me up why, 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 picking on bone broth? <laughs> he, he cracks me up on f- so many levels <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're you're referring to this Rogan Rogan interview, right, with the interdimensional things? <laughs> oh man, I bet, I, dude. I I stumbled across Alex Jones when he wrote a uh, he wrote like the the NW like one of the first big NWO books back in like '96 or '7. 
Ah. And that's that's uh, somehow I stumbled across that uh, and read the whole thing and just, you know, always kept an open mind about everything. Like, oh, that's probably horse shit. But it's like, holy crap, it's true, the whole thing. And uh, whew, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like... It's it's like Alex Jones. Pedophiles. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But the the a global agenda to make a one world communist state is definitely a reality. Uh, I don't know about the the interdimensional pedophile he, lizards. He's not he's not wrong about what's happening. He's wrong about who's doing. He's, he's, Perhaps we don't know we yet. Go. He well, could in, be in, right. In he fairness, in he fairness, don't, don't, don't shut yourself out to the truth. In, in <laughs> fairness, I do believe the whole lizard thing that everybody depends on him really was David Ike's and it, it, Alex never yeah, actually yeah, really subscribed David to Ike him. Is a yeah, shill no, too. I right. I think that's, personally that's no offense. At all. I think Ike's just that's insane. not serious at all. I I use it because it's hilarious. Like I can't not laugh when I mention that. Oh, no, I don't it's think funny. he's ever mentioned the Anunnaki or the Palladians. Or the gr- I mean, maybe he's <laughs> mentioned gray aliens and red aliens or something. But like, I, you got to be really deep down the hole to start really knowing some of this stuff. And I don't think Alex Jones would keep his audience if he went down this this deep hole. He's got to stay around <laughs> this surface hadn't. level. You know, here we are anyway, conservative uh, level. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> getting back, getting back to Vanu. <laughs> I guess I guess, I guess one. I guess well, one other interesting thing, I, I mentioned that, uh, you know, Ray was kind of a, a pioneer. He was definitely a freedom pioneer, um, uh, but he was an engineer as well. And he was uh, very keen to, you know, what uh, he was very aware of what he, he kind of foresaw technology going in a certain direction. Uh, so you want to you want to kind of talk a little bit, a little bit about what Ray predicted or I guess uh, yes, foresaw please. maybe a yes. better word. Yes. Yeah, because yes, this, 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 this was some very interesting stuff, too. He. Uh... Yeah. Quite the uh, okay. Prophetic yep. mind, so, I so the f- I, I always <laughs> love these prediction, these these uh, Machiavellian, Nostradamus type things. So lay it out. <laughs> Maybe a little different, but anyways, anyway. So, so the first one, which I think is pretty interesting, is something he called secured communicators. Uh, and I'll read just a little bit of this to give you to give you an idea. Just a couple of sentences. Quote: To buy or sell something, I speak or, or I type or speak an inquiry, order or, or offer into my secure communicator, SC. My SC enciphers my message and transmit, transmits it to SCs of a few individuals I know and trust, which in turn they automatically re-encipher and relay it in microseconds to SCs of people they trust. Uh, so it's a way to get message out quickly if you're selling something or communicating or whatever. Uh, so he's talking about you know encrypted communications is what he was referring to then. Uh, so like PGP and encryption, yeah, that's yeah. what he was kind of you know he referring to it. with. Uh, and and, yes. and one other, also another interesting thing here too, uh, cryptocurrencies, guys. What? Ready for this? Ready for yeah, this? Let's yeah. hear it, please. So, so this is this is kind of you know towards the end of his SC, like uh, so so he's he's put out his product or service for sale, and uh, someone says, uh, hey, uh, you know uh, I want this. So quote, he and I then converse almost as easily as by telephone telefax, but without having any idea who or where the other person is. At this time, we may change our cipher so that our message is no longer intelligible to intermediate SCs which relay it. We come to terms and arrange delivery. If it is a physical product, delivery may, may, uh, may be made through a drop. And here's the important part, guys. Uh, quote, but most products will be information in one form or another and can be delivered through the SC net. Um, actually, hold on. Uh, so uh, next, next sentence here when he talks about the, how, how, how people are going to be paid. Quote, payment would most likely be in credits transmitted through the net to an underground bank. So a little off, but transmitted through the net. He's not wrong. No. This could no, happen. Yeah, underground bunker banks are a thing in places. A lot of people don't know about them, but under like huge, like 50, you know, 100 feet underground bunker banks exist. So this definitely is kind of... Yeah, but, it, but even just... And transmitted through the too, net. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's that's the well, a whole thing. bank full of servers could be set up and it mean the same thing. So yeah, no, but no, but just the idea that he was, I mean, he was he was either t- I mean, you could either attach that to the blockchain technology and stuff and 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 cryptocurrencies or just uh, mm-hmm. just debit cards in general too, because that's essentially yeah, ele- what electronic uh, electronic electronic true. money transfer. Either way, he was still ahead of his time. <laughs> he was still ahead, like he, you know, I mean. 
there were other people too at the time too, but you know, certain people, have, they, you, how, you see how in tune their mind was because you said he was an engineer and he thought, you know, he obviously thought and viewed the world very differently than say the rest of us do who don't have that type of mind. And you can, when you when your mind works like that, you can see, you see patterns, you see things far ahead that, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. really blown away that he pretty much predicted peer-to-peer uh, -peer encryption yeah, um, yeah, that one on, was really on crazy. various <laughs> on SM too, devices, that, which yeah. I mean, one could argue is a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but we aren't we aren't done yet, guys. Oh, <laughs> but, we are not oh, but wait, so there's we, more. Yeah, I, we're yeah, getting yeah. Ron Popeil right now. <laughs> go, 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 go. But go, uh, so, go, so go. Dave, you're talking you're talking about 3D printing, right? Yeah. You ready for this? Quote, barring a catastrophe of sufficient magnitude to destroy technology worldwide, I predict that within a few decades, there will be inexpensive, lightweight, and mostly automated biochemical devices capable of converting most organic compounds into most other organic compounds. Load the hopper with dead leaves or sawdust, insert the proper program, wait a few days, and out comes food wafers, which are at least as nutritious and tasty as most of the stuff sold in supermarkets today. Insert different programs and outcomes various plastics for constructing construction and clothing. Of course, this is just one approach. End quote. So not obviously wow. exactly, but still. I mean, yeah. he was it's almost yeah, star. Strokes, it's almost Star Trek printing, level, yeah. huh? He was on yeah, some Star Trek level that is, stuff. That is 3D printing. That is exactly what that is. Now the the food wafer part, that's whatever. I think that's just automated food production. Uh, that's not necessarily. 3D printing, what but what he said stuff? about like plastic and all pe the rest people, of stuff. Yeah, people have th people have 3D printed uh, chocolate and stuff. Well, no, I so that that is that's yeah. possible. Well, no, I, I think I think it's more than just automated food production because he was talking about uh, you know trans taking like leaves and stuff and turning that into these food wafers. So yeah, these things uh, would be able to modify it just like at its core, at its matter core, and print it out as different matter. Well, Re basically, me up for one of those. Rearrange <laughs> exactly. rearranging its atoms. I'll take two. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Please. Yeah. Uh, here's a basket of leaves and print me like a f an AR. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, no, so a little off. Liberals little hate off, this still. one trick. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Dave. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, my mind's always in meme mode, guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> it got Jeremy to laugh. <laughs> memory. Good. Nothing but memory. But no, that is that's phenomenal, and it just goes to show you, you know, where like how much farther ahead, you know, people like Rayo were thinking, where they're they're seeing four, five, six, seven, eight steps ahead, and that, and I wonder if that's not the reason why that some of these things don't get as much traction as they would otherwise, because it requires a higher order of of thinking or a higher order of reasoning and and perception to to follow it all the way to its conclusion. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that's definitely you know like if you explain that to somebody, and they're like, "What are you talking about, man? Well, we, we don't even have a telephone. Well, whatever. We don't even have this yet. Or we, we we don't even like we can't even do this yet. You really <laughs> think that's gonna happen? Uh, I it's, mean, uh, so, so yeah, yeah, it's it takes it's it takes some very forward thinking and also kind of understanding. You know, kind of I mean, probably an understanding of history too, right? Uh, you yeah. know, kind of knowing the direction technology is is, is kind of going in, uh, which I, I think he definitely uh, uh, he, he definitely kind of understood that. But there there's one other thing here, and this isn't technology based, but uh, but considering the time frame, uh, he he talked a lot about uh, what he called them were country shoppers. Uh, but these would be your your modern day perpetual travelers. Uh, mm -hmm. That that took, that was I mean with the with the sailboating and then also so yeah you could implement with your sailboating with Almost perpetual like traveling too. Well, no. Yeah, but you you choose you, well, you, you kind of yeah you can you can choose what governments you kind of uh, visit the ones that you're choosing you know, what ruler yeah. you want to live under essentially. Yeah, well, there's people that do this right now. There's people that country hop yeah. essentially, and because there's if you continually ho country hop, I mean, they can never unless you just get jacked up right when you get to a new country. Well, they well, they can never really build a, a huge repertoire on YouTube. Well, they like, can't shut you down. Well, no, I was gonna say because there's a, the, at least the, the people that I've uh, read about and and watch videos and stuff and listen to listen to give talks about the fact that they do this. There's a lot of people that do it. There's each you know each country has a uh, has limitations on like their essentially their mm -hmm. you know their visa programs and how long you exactly. can stay, how long you can stay so you know you f you figure that out and you go and stay in these countries for like that period of time and then you don't have to deal with the tax structure and you don't have to deal with all this other stuff and then once that time's up then you just bounce off and you move somewhere else and you just you basically country hop or you know around the world and then you're never tied to one location so you don't actually have to deal with uh, any uh, yeah. of the additional that's a, that's exactly 
Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly right. I interviewed Pete Cisco, who is a perpetual traveler as part of yeah, the direct action one. series. Yeah, and uh, he was, uh, uh, yeah. Whenever you whenever you have no home, no government can claim claim ownership to you. They can't say that you owe them anything because you aren't a citizen anywhere. Um, and you know so, what's crazy is, yeah. is it's against the UN by UN law, which is the world government, to be uncountried essentially. Like you have to be a on paper citizen of a country, or you are illegal and they will if they ever round you up they'll find out your birth country take you there they'll essentially extradite you to there to a like the prison a, a un prison there to be uh processed back into your society <laughs> Yeah, and, yes. and Pete Cisco does. He 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 never he he didn't expatriate. He didn't rescind his Canadian citizenship. Um, so he still is technically a citizen in Canada, but he doesn't earn any money or do anything in Canada. Um, so so I think he would still be legal there. And he's been doing this for. Uh, he's been running online businesses for like uh, you know twenty years now. Uh, so I mean he he's been doing this well, since well, like Bitcoin the really opened everything up, right? Bitcoin oh, yeah. just changed the entire game because, like, driving around with briefcases full of. Uh, cash in your car or on a or you know in a boat with a huge bunch of gold or cash is dangerous as hell but if you've got it on a device that you can just throw out in the water and just go type the password in on a new device when you get to land or whatever and no one can stop that like the world has completely changed and people don't really like no one's really re realized that yet Oh no, they oh, yeah. they've realized oh, yeah. it. Believe me, the the fact that it's, the fact yeah, that it's different governments and then have... when localized Vanu currencies pop up, <laughs> Shane, like where you know these Ooh, people who you know are I'm trying thinking? to live a Vanu a Vanu cryptocurrency. Oh my god! Yeah, there you go. There that you only go. Vanu people use. <laughs> hey man, you you, you because guys... look, the only thing that gives currency value is belief. Okay, yeah. belief that it will be able to be redeemed for equal or more value. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. <laughs> um, but I, I was gonna huh. say, I was gonna say, Shane, you know, you don't have enough on your plate. You guys should just try to figure out how to how you should get that cryptocurrency up and running. You know, gosh, that's out. <laughs> that's outside of my realm of, uh, you know, uh, um, realm of possibility. But uh, hey, if there's a programmer out there who wants to do that, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but but yeah, I guess in, in regards to what we're kind of discussing here, I mean, c consider what Rayo had to deal with. You know, with with with, with his search for personal freedom. Uh, and then consider, you know, how how much technology can assist. Uh, uh, I'm going to use this in the air quotes. Can assist us in, you know, becoming uh, and you know, uh, becoming a Vanuin. Uh, he he I, I, he foresaw a lot of things, but I don't think he could have really foresaw, you know. Uh, I, I mean, it would have been super easy for him now if he had all the technology available to him. Um, but as he said, Vanu is yours for the making, and uh, you know, technology can assist uh, uh, can assist you in major ways. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, and, and becoming a Vanu, and so I, I think that kind of needs to be emphasized. Uh, and again, I mean, you don't have to go wilderness Vanu if you want to, go for it. But uh, <laughs> at the same time, uh, technology is, you know, uh, uh, you know, progress in a way uh, to which uh, you you don't have to sacrifice all of your amenities. Uh, choosing it, depending upon what you choose, uh, whether it's you know van nomadism, uh, uh, wilderness Vanu. Uh, you know, uh, intentional communities, sailboating, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you, you, you there, there will have to be some sacrifices, obviously. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in your search for freedom, but at the same time, uh, it's it's a lot easier now than than it was when when Ray was trying to do this. Well, not trying, he was, but yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Well, it definitely is, and uh, I, I like I said, I, I I think it's a very interesting idea, and you know, definitely something that. I think it's worthy looking into because for, you know, there's so many people out there that, that complain that there's just nothing they can do and the state's just always in the way. And, you know, this is just another one of those I'm things. I'm a voluntarist, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. It's like, well, you know Try what? Try Vanu! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th th here's another option, you know. It, 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 you know, like like we've said, it may not be for everybody, but there's, there's bound to be enough people that at least talk about it enough that they say they want to be able to be free like this. Well, you know, here's an opportunity to, you know, I mean, I, and even, and even if they don't take it, it'll at least open their mind to other possibilities, which is always really the key to trying to live free of coercion and live free of the state. Sure. 
I mean, uh, yes, and I want to, and, and people also tend to think that you know it takes a lot of money for like to find freedom, right? I mean, you know, if I if I just you know if I if I you know if I if I get rich, I'll, it, it'll be a lot easier to do this. Uh, well, Ray wasn't working with a lot of money, uh, and uh, uh, this this relates to the financial independent aspect that he was discussing in the '60s. I mean, that's progressed a lot with folks like Jake DeSillis, uh and uh, uh, and uh, uh, Jacob Lundfisker and, and others, you know, in the financial independent realm. Um, but uh, uh, this is what you know uh, uh, Rayo had to say about you know uh, you don't have to make a lot of money uh, to, to to you know find freedom. Uh, he said, uh, uh, quote, at $2 per hour clear, 300 hours of city labor, one month with overtime will pay for eight months of Vanu living. And earning money usually requires, uh, okay, let's see, I, we haven't discussed that, so I'm not going to go into that here. Um, but uh, uh, and this is an article that Kyle, my co-host, wrote. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know we, he writes articles for all the episodes we do. Uh, but uh, he said, uh, uh, quote, given the annual inflation percentage rate between 1972 and 2017 uh, was 4.01%, and that would mean that $2 in 1972 would be equivalent to about $11.75 today. Uh, so he said uh, you'd rake in uh, around three uh, thirty five hundred dollars uh, uh, these days, uh, and the forty hours a week plus uh, plus a little bit of overtime. Uh, so he was proposing, you know, living on uh, thirty five hundred dollars for eight months. But if you consider, you know, uh, the major the major costs such as, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, taxes and uh, you know, uh, um, you know, like uh, like a house. Uh, whenever you cut out those kind of those major expenses. Uh, you you don't have to have a lot of money, uh, and especially if you live in a van. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you, you cut down on on that quite a bit. You know, mortgages Down's and all of river. that. <laughs> <laughs> so so it doesn't. I guess the the point here is that you you don't have to uh, you don't have to be rich to to Vanu. Um, and uh, he he does recommend you build up a nest egg first because uh, once you once you kind of uh, uh, you know. Decide that this is the path you're going to go down. Uh, most of your time is going to spent, you know, improving your your Vanu skills. Uh, you're not going to have a whole, whole lot of time for work, even if there is some. Uh, now, if you're if you're doing what Rayo did, you're gonna, I mean, yeah, you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to like uh, design structures out in the middle of the woods, uh, and then how you're going to uh, store your food, et cetera, et cetera, or foraging or whatever. Um, so I guess the point here is that it does. You don't have to be rich to do this. Uh, heck, he was talking about uh, um, $3,500 today for eight months, and that puts you, you don't even have to, like at that point, uh, under $10,000, you don't, you don't even have to file uh, for income taxes. So, uh, so I guess the, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong about you know, living under the poverty threshold. There are some advantages to that. Uh, and also keep in mind, that can just be your above, or above uh, book earnings, uh, and you could, pr- you could partake in ethical enclaves uh, or otherwise known as agorism. Uh, and keep that off the books, but uh, obviously I don't recommend that, and uh, or I, I don't uh, advise people to break the law. But uh, there you have it. <laughs> um, I want to mention just real quick because you mentioned uh, you're going to spend a lot of your time uh, when you're vanoing, uh, focusing on building structures and improving your your own living conditions. Technology has it reduced the amount of time you need to spend doing that dramatically. I mean, YouTube on its own will save you hundreds of hours of designing and trying out and testing things and paying people to mm-hmm. teach you how to do things yeah, exactly abso- absolutely you no longer have to be skilled yourself as an individual in order to do these things because there's you like to be like a monkey. hundreds of hours there's there's I hundreds can attest of to this. hours as long as you're adaptable there's hundreds of hours of people to teach you mm-hmm. how to do things exactly and uh, you can see it firsthand i am I'm essentially pretty, i'm pretty much a monkey um, in a lot of ways when it comes to that stuff and I've learned how to do so many things. Uh, That's yeah. right. That's right. I, monkey I, see, I, monkey do. You know, I mean, Dave jokes around all the time and calls me a Luddite. I mean, I, I learned how I figured out how to take my laptop apart and replace parts on the inside. I was like, wow, I could do this stuff. See, look, all I had to do is get another, all I had to do is get another laptop so I could you learn could how to do it. You put computer tech on your, uh, exactly. on your resume. Well, no, I, well, sadly, I already, I already had a computer tech on my resume, but I didn't know how to do that stuff. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I was one for oh, a long boy. time. I just got thrown into it, but. You know, I learned I learned more on I learned more in uh, like a, a day and a half looking through YouTube stuff than I did in two years working on the job. So, testament oh, yeah. to YouTube and uh, what what well, you can learn. When you days to seek do. actively seek knowledge, you find it a lot quicker than if you're just passively waiting for it to, you know, well again your desk essentially. Yeah, but again, these days it's it's even easier as as Shane kept talking about because you know back when Ray was trying oh, to do this, yeah. it wasn't as easy to find all this stuff. So. You could seriously set up a model Vanu community and YouTube the whole thing from beginning to end, uh, and people could then 
build on that like as if it was version 1.0 for sure like that's how everything's going to change just due to that stuff I, I all of my farming systems that i'm setting up personally are adaptations of older people that have mastered a certain thing that i've been like hey if these two masters only could talk to each other oh wait they did they just didn't realize it <laughs> yeah yeah so Oh yeah, technology, technology, uh, technology definitely helps. Uh, it definitely helps, and uh, uh, yeah, you don't have to, uh, uh, you don't have to wait on, uh, you know, this this month's uh, edition of uh, Vonu Week or, or uh, Vonu Life or whatever, whatever publication exactly. is to find out, uh, find out, you know, uh, uh, what's what successes did Rayo have this month? How did his food storage go? Uh, did it rain? Did it rain inside his structure? Was he pissed about it? Oh yeah, he was. Uh, I mean, you don't you don't have to wait. Like you can just go look it up on you. You can go look it up on hell. Uh, I have a, a book. Uh, it tells you exactly to build a build a log cabin uh and you know that that used to be like a, a really hard feat like a you know really good log cabin Ooh, I found uh, a so really yeah, this cool information app, uh, this information is all all readily available uh, yeah that's yeah. what i was I, fixing to say i have a survival app on my phone like i can look it up and it teaches me how yeah, to build a makeshift an shelter and survival, all this stuff yeah it's offline survival menu it's all it's on the play store I yes, suggest that's everyone exactly to, what I have. That is exactly yeah, what I Yeah, I suggest have. everyone to uh, download it. It's got everything on there. Basic medicine, shelter, water, fire, food, plants, power, planning, kits, how much people, how many carbs people need a day. It's got everything. Is it on uh, on uh, the uh, iTunes store, the iPhone store? Uh, I mean, it should oh, be. Oh, you damn but beautiful it's, people. It's, all you would need is <laughs> a... All you would need is a solar panel and a outlet to charge that phone uh and a lead box to put all of that in and even if there was an emp strike you'd be able to get into your offline uh <laughs> survival manual and i i i hold i hold on to my you know i have a, I have a book i mean yeah the the apps the apps very handy for now but I, I have you know a couple books that are essentially the same thing i'll hold on to those two just in case you could buy a bluetooth printer from walmart and print the entire thing out you're such a like light probably five hundred dollars. No, it's an expensive book. Not for real. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably expensive. <laughs> anyway, you see how often Dave thousands reads books. of pages he's, he's, on that thing. I, I got lost looking through it, but yeah. You see how often Dave actually reads now. books. Everything, no idea how much they cost. Everything that used to be expensive, like you used to have to like buy books to, for this stuff, is now it's just free. It's like, oh yeah, just download this free survival map or survival app. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and I guess one other thing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna leak the entire thing. Um, but uh, but I have. Uh, we at Liberty Intertech, we have found out what our next direct, direct action series is going to be. Um, but uh, uh, but well, what I will say is that there will be a a, a lot more. Uh, you know, kind of along the same vein as Vanu. Uh, uh, pretty much uh, any book that uh, we digitize from this uh, certain publisher uh, that's that's now uh, defunct. Uh, uh, there's going to be a, a major project to, to put out a lot of these books for free, so you guys don't have to pay anything for them. Uh, we'll just uh, no. we'll get them up there, get them up there for free. Other than that, I'm not going to say anything else. Still, some some work to do behind the scenes, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think uh, uh, if if you enjoy if you enjoy uh, the subject of Vanu uh, or direct action or anything, uh, yeah, uh, just just wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hate I hate to leave it like that, but no, no, uh, that's, but, <laughs> that's fine. That's that's a good cliff. That's a good cliffhanger to leave out on. Though. Exactly, that is perfect. So keep, keep us wanting more. You know, keep us coming back for more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to tease. Yeah, exactly. So. All right. Well, before we do get closing out, uh, Shane, it was great having you on again, and uh, I'm glad we got to talk about this. Uh, I hope more people are interested in check out, checking it out, um, as well as what you're, you know, the uh, the tease that you're giving us too. Um, but please uh, plug, plug, plug away before uh, we get going. For sure, for sure. So uh, uh, the topic of discussion tonight can be found uh, on the Vonu podcast. Uh, that's vonupodcast.com. If you don't know how to spell that, it's V is in Victor, O and is in Nancy, U. Vonnypodcast.com. Uh, obviously, all the episodes are there. You can get uh, uh, Vonu, the Search for Personal Freedom, uh, by Rayo in uh, PDF or audiobook format for free. We won't put any of our stuff behind a paywall. And uh, I mean, let's see what else. What else is there? Uh, uh, if uh, you know, we went through some definitions today. It could have been a lot more definition heavy, but uh, uh, I didn't do that for for good reason. <laughs> uh, there's a definitions page uh, that you can go to on the site. Uh, uh, Obviously, you can find all of the articles uh, and uh, just uh, a lot of a lot of good stuff there. Uh, and also, the other the other thing I do is uh, Liberty Under Attack. That's uh, LibertyUnderAttack.com. Uh, it's my second podcast, and uh, yeah, we just talk about direct action, philosophy, economics, a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of good stuff. 
Um, but uh, yeah, with that said, thanks so much, guys, for for having me back on. And um, I mean, it's, it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. It was a pleasure for me for the first time talking to you. I it was this was great. I absolutely love this, and I can't wait to continue this conversation. Yes. Likewise, well, sir. I, I appreciate you coming on, Shane, and I really appreciate you for all you do over at Liberty Under Attack, and 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 as well with this Von New podcast. Uh, uh, the you know just you're a powerful tool for spreading liberty. So keep it up, man. Thanks so much, Dave. I, I definitely appreciate it. Thanks for being such a tool, Shane. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you're the best tool of the bunch, buddy. <laughs> I guess there's something we said for that, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, yeah. So once again, yeah, man, this has been great. Uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on. So, all right. Well, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at theseedsofliberty.com. We do have our Patreon page. And I did put, put another episode out last night. So as promised. Yes, you did. More content yes, did. is coming. So please... Uh, Please consider going to the Patreon page, which will be in the show notes, and checking it out, and consider donating. Uh, I think you only have to donate a dollar. Maybe it's a month, but I think it's just one dollar. Any... We'll even take one peso if you'll do. I it. think it's. I think it's actually set. All my posts seem to be set one to all, all of our Patreons, which basically means anybody who gives us money. I think so. There you go. Um, you know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so yeah, there's going to be more of that. There's going to be more of that to come hopefully soon. All right. So once again, this has uh, been the Seas Liberty Cup podcast, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT No Gov License allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.